Okay, so I'm, I'm going to talk and I, okay, say something back to me. Brownies. It's perfect. <laughs> Throughout my whole life, I quit a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like just different various things. I kind of considered myself a quitter with a lot of things. And when I hit photography, I was like, I'm not quitting this. This is gonna this is gonna stick. I'm gonna go through this. You know, this is this is what I was meant to do. Hi you guys, and welcome to the Laundry Chat Podcast, a place where we help each other sort out life's laundry. My name is Molly Marco, and today I had the honor to talk to Kyle Ingman, or Kyle J. Ingman on Instagram. He is a landscape photographer, commercial photographer, he does portrait photography. Um, he is just a, an amazing photographer and also an amazing person. I knew Kyle when, in the summer of 2016, I was celebrating my one year of recovery from my eating disorder, and I wanted pictures of it, um, or pictures of like myself. And and I remember seeing Kyle's work and being like, he needs to take my photos. So um, we spent a solid amount of time taking photos, and at the end, I was like, Kyle, how much do I owe you? And he's like, eh. 20 bucks. <laughs> and so that was when Kyle was first starting his photography Instagram journey. And now he is at thousands of followers and his photography has only improved. And it was just such a good time talking with him about his process through that and some of his thoughts and tips on how to get through, as in his own words, um, the creative's curse. And I remember him telling me that we, we talk about it in the, in, the, in the interview, but Kyle has been a person that when I started getting in photography, really encouraged me and gave me advice and helped me and offered his um, expertise on things that I had no idea <laughs> where to start. So um, yeah, Kyle is just a great person um, with, like I said, some really great insight on how to overcome those creative ruts that we get in. Um, and so, yeah, I am super excited for you to listen. Um, I really hope that this in some way encourages you to pursue your passion, um, whether or not it's photography. It could be writing. It could be boating. It could be dancing. It could be singing. Um, it could be woodworking, anything, whatever you love and are passionate about. Um, I hope that Kyle, Kyle helps remind you that to go for it and to do it, um, He's traveled across the United States, and I think his just willingness for, in his willingness for adventure is just inspiring in itself. And the fact that it's documented in photography it makes it all that much more beautiful. So, without further ado, here is my interview with Kyle Ingman. Um, let's first start off with who you are. Um, for people who aren't already following you, for people who have no idea who Kyle Ingman is, um, how would you describe yourself to someone who doesn't know you? Well, my name's definitely Kyle Ingman. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm a Wisconsin native. I was born here in Amory, actually, probably like 60 feet that way. In oh yeah, because this, this used to be the hospital. This used to be the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is so fitting. <laughs> and I do a lot of photography work. If that's the way you put it. Uh, yeah, I'm a commercial photographer in my spare time, and then I do full-time uh, produce work over at Dick's Fresh Market to kind of cover my my travel addiction. Yeah, to, to fuel the that's, photography. Yep. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, like, is there anything interesting about you that we should know? Any fun facts that you have? Any fun facts? Oh, my God. I'm sure there's something. I know, uh, okay. Before I was in the photography, I did sports writing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Didn't in where was that? Did you do that in Green Bay? Uh, or no, I I was covering the Green Bay Packers for a sub scary website of Sports Illustrated. Okay, that's cool. So, um, I wrote for a website that was owned by Sports Illustrated, and then some of my articles actually ended up getting featured on their site. That's sweet. And that was always a childhood dream of mine. Like, yeah. From when I was really young, like I used to write like all these like uh, football articles and stuff. Off topic, but like, do you still write still, or have you not really no, done it for a while? No, I, I I quit writing like right at the same time as I picked up photography. Interesting. Okay. I, there's a good Ron Swanson quote that goes along with that: "It's don't half-ass two things, whole-ass one thing." Yes. And I, 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 when I was trying to decide if I want to go into photography, I was like, all right, if I'm going to do this, I have to do it a hundred percent. Yeah. 
can't split my time between two things. That's awesome. I, I think it like turn, I think that was a good choice on your part. Um, not that you can't do both, but I think like seeing you grow, like it it was it was just cool to see you like put your whole heart in it and yeah, super inspiring. <laughs> but okay, so what's your dirty laundry as of late? So I Actu- had actual to, dirty laundry. Well, <laughs> is it seriously? Yeah. <laughs> I can't keep up with it. No. It's bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is there anything else other like in your life that's kind of like you've been struggling with lately uh, or struggling? Probably photography actually. I'm yeah. kind of in a wall right now. Which is okay. Yeah. Those those can end up being the most creative moments for for creatives. That's true. Because yeah. uh you kinda hit that stride where you're kinda doing stuff, you're doing it like kind of average, 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 and then it kinda goes down and then you get something that's really good. Right, and it kind of mm-hmm. bounces you back up into it, and so I'm kind of waiting for that to, to yeah. hit. Yeah, how long have you been in this kind of like lull? Uh, it's been a couple months. Yeah, it's been kind of slow. I mean, it's spring here, so you can't really shoot a lot of stuff. And um, the my commitment to Dix right now, I can't travel. Yeah. For the rest, well, uh, not until like August. Really? So, well, that's all right. I mean, I there's plenty of stuff to do around here now that it's summer. But, I suppose. Huh. Yeah, that that would be it. That's some dirty. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Um, how did you? Okay, so let's like backtrack and like tell us the story of how you kind of you kind of got into it a little bit about how you were in sports journalism to starting full full a word <laughs> full a wording photography. <laughs> um, like how how did that happen? Uh, it, it's a long story. I mean. There was, it. there's, it's not like one certain thing happened and then all of a sudden I was in photography. It was like a lot of things. So uh, when I was writing, I would go to the Packers training camp, take photos, because one of my biggest pet peeves when I was writing was there was no copyright free photos for create for writers to use with their articles. So I wanted to go, I shot just a ton of photos, put them on Flickr, no copyright, so everyone could use them, all the writers, all my fellow sports bloggers that covered the Packers, they could use the photos. And I came to find out that, like, that was, like, my favorite part was taking photos at, mm. at sports camp. And I was like, oh, well, maybe I could do photography. And I was like, nah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense. And I'm already going for, uh, I'm already going for writing. So I, I might as well stick with that and maybe do photography, on the, you know, sports photography on the side and see if that works out. Well, I was in my second year at Barham County uh, for mass communications. And, uh. I was uh, in class like every single day, and I'm not a school guy at all. It, it's terrible. I, I can't focus. My brain's always going a thousand percent. And so, like, I was constantly daydreaming. Like, you've seen the movie uh, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, right? Yeah, oh, parts of it. Oh, yeah. You've seen it? I, I've oh, seen it. Man. I've seen it sort of, but I wasn't like fully watching it when I was watching it. But That's like my full inspiration. Okay. That's kind of like how my journey started was I was kind of just like a stagnant guy who was looking for more like adventure. So I started like immersing myself in like travel stuff. So it really wasn't photography that was first. It was the idea of traveling. Mm -hmm. Then photography kind of came with it. So I was like watching, there's a TV show called Departures that was kind of like my biggest like, uh, I guess my, my biggest kick in the ass was Walter Mitty, the movie, and then Departures. And I know that they're just... TV shows and, uh, and movies, but, you know, they're pretty big inspirations. And uh, I just started thinking, like, well, where haven't I been? I've been up to north of Duluth, and I started, like, planning all these trips. And, like, basically, like, in, in class, like, I'd be supposed to be paying attention to, like, government <laughs> politics and stuff, like, for my class. And I'd be sitting there, like, planning out a whole, like, three-week trip through Europe oh, that's or awesome. something. <laughs> and it was, like, February, and finally it was, like, all right, how would I make money if I did this? So I started, I picked up a camera, and I was like, well, let's see if I can make some photos, because I had started following, like, photography on Instagram at that point. And I went and I walked out, like, in my backyard and shot, like, photos of pine trees or something. <laughs> what and, camera do you have? Was it a... Oh, at the time? Yeah. It was a Nikon D50. Okay. It was, uh, right now, it would be 14 years old, so it was pretty mm-hmm. outdated. Wow. Uh, I couldn't shoot raw. Oh, yeah. So, so <laughs> JPEG. I was in JPEG, which is fine because I was starting out. Yeah. And, oh, that's funny. Yeah, so I got some advice on how to use a camera from some website, and they're like, 
put the ISO to 1600, uh, put your F stop to 22. I don't know if it was like a parody website. <laughs> I followed it for about maybe like three, four weeks and I'm like, this isn't working. Oh my gosh. Like in the middle of day, just shooting. Like, I'm not getting good photos. <laughs> like I suck. I'm horrible. Yeah. When like just the, it. With the aperture, you get the blur in the background. And I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, what, is, what software are they using to get the blur in the background? Like, that's how bad I was at photography when I started. That's so cool, though. Oh, that's funny. How, I remember when, because I had, when I had asked you, it was like, was it summer of 2016 that I asked you to take my pictures? Yeah. Yeah, and I remember you were kind of like, it, it was when I first like had noticed that you were doing photography and I was like oh my gosh your photos are so good and I remember you saying like I don't know if you remember this but you were at like 666 followers yep. and you kept like going like up and down but you kept staying at like yeah. 666 and now you have almost like like 17,000 almost. I just cracked 17,000 yesterday. Yeah. And it went back down again. And then, <laughs> that's awesome like how did that like, how did, it, how did it start from, like, in 2016 to, like, 2018 now? Like, having, like, I mean, that growth. How, like, how did the growth happen? Yeah, kind of. Or, I like... Had, uh, if I had an answer, <laughs> I would tell you. But, I, honestly, it was just I posted photos and people followed me for it. Yeah. So, I think part of it, too, is just being able to convey good stories with the photos, too. Yeah. Um, really, that's it. It's not like I called Instagram. I'm like, hey, guys, <laughs> give me... No, on the me. hook for this stuff. Yeah. Huh. That's that's crazy. I, oh, my gosh. Um, okay. I guess, yeah, we'll go to this. Like, where are you at? You kind of mentioned it, but where you are, are, where are you right now? Like, what's your kind of, like, what, in photography, like, where, what's, what does a day look like for you with photography? Or is it kind of not, like, uh, it's just kind of. I think, maybe you explain uh, or yeah, I guess like what I had written was, um, well, where are you right now in this journey? Right now? Yeah. Uh, just trying to get work. That's yeah. That's the big thing. Uh, there's a kind of a, the whole industry is collapsing at the moment. It's, That's the problem is cause there's so many people working for free. So it's, it's tough to pick up paid work cause yeah. all these companies for every person that's asking for money, there's a hundred people asking for no money at all. That's yeah. Hmm. And, it's, and it will, it'll collapse the industry. But uh, companies need to learn that what they, you know, what they're paying for is what they get. So if, they're, if they want free work, it's going to be free quality. Yeah. You know, you're, the people that are going to spend the most work and, you know, put the most effort into their photos are going to be the people that are paid. You know, if I'm not getting paid anything and I have to do work for somebody, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be that great at it. Yeah. If I showed up at Dick's one day and they were like, yeah, we're not going to pay you today, but you got to do all your stuff. I would be like, okay, well, I'm going to sit in the back. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that would be that would be super hard. To, I guess that falls in the dirty laundry yeah, category. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> yeah, especially in this, like, I remember I was talking to my friend about it, and she's like, everyone's a photographer now. Like, ev- like everyone, feel, like, if you have an iPhone, you feel like you're yeah, a photographer. I, I you know. that. Yeah, so it's like it's hard to like. If, if anyone wants to be creative, they can be creative. I mean, for no sure. Supposed to say that they're not. Yeah. Yes. No, I agree with that. It just like makes it hard to harder to stand out and harder to like make it a living when it feels like anyone could do it or like it doesn't feel like it's that hard or I don't know. At least like from my perspective, I'm like, oh my gosh, like anyone could do what I'm doing. Like, what makes me yeah. worth like hiring or that kind of thing? So I don't know. I, it made me think of that, but. <laughs> Um, okay. So yeah, tying into that, um, and actually I think, think you called it the creative's curse or something. We were driving to Duluth. I remember I was, I was just starting in photography and I was like, I literally, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I just was like telling you basically what I just told you now, I guess, is how like, I feel like I, my work sucks. It's not good compared to anyone else's. And you're like, that's just like the creative struggle. Yeah. Like that's a creative's curse. That's like, normal. yes, it's normal. And I was, I never heard that before. And I was like, it is <laughs> like and what? So um, yeah, how would you how would you define that? And like how yeah, basically how would you define the creative's curse? Oh man, uh, that's a tough one. Uh, probably the way you interpret stuff is not the way other people interpret stuff. So uh, you might think something is just fantastic, and then other people come and they're like, I don't really like this, or 
uh, you know, you put some, you put something on Instagram, and you're like, oh, it's just another photo, and then it blows up. Everybody's like, oh my yeah. god, this is for real. <laughs> I remember your iPhone photo or your Android photo on Twitter. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yep. it, it like went viral. Yep. and it was just on. You're like, I just took this on my phone. <laughs> yeah, everyone was asking me. They're like, oh my god, like, what did you do for this? And I was like, I literally just pulled my phone out and just. <laughs> Like, it, was, it wasn't even a good phone. It was, like, an LG Volt or something. Or, no, it was my... It was an S6, I think. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it was just... It wasn't even with my main camera. It wasn't edited or anything. It was just that was the moment. And I guess that cap- captivated people. Yeah. Um, so, for me, I was like, oh, just... This is a photo. This is where I am right now. And people were, like, going nuts over it. Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, what else would there be for the... Creator's curse. Um, I guess once you're one hundred percent happy with your work, then you're stagnant. That was the other part. Is if you're, if is is if you're always happy with your work, you're never growing because you're never um, looking for something new. I like that. That was that was the other part was to be constant to constantly be growing and being pushing yourself in the direction of being a photographer. You have to hate your work. Yeah. That was the, the you know, a, a true photographer is never happy with his work. That was that was kind of the, the big part of it, the curse. Is Interesting. If, if you want to keep moving forward, you'll never be happy with, with the work. Huh. I mean, you can be, you can be kind of happy, but not, <laughs> not like 100%. Like, yes. Yeah. Huh. So it, it's kind of like a blessing, in, sort of. I mean, in a way. It's then. a curse. It's a curse. <laughs> That's what it is. But without it, then you would never improve, I guess. Then I mean, there's, there's photos where I take that, I'm like, oh my god, these are these are great. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, then all of a sudden I'll look at another photo from like one of my peers, and I'm like, okay, yeah. that just blows everything away. Uh, I'm yeah. not even close to that. <laughs> I might like my work, but I'm not anywhere near what I want, where I want to yes. be. Yes, yeah. Huh. How would you, how do you personally, um, like, We'll kind of combine these questions. Like, how do you tackle the creative curse? Like, how do you um, find the cure from it? And then how would you, kind of tying into how would you, like, suggest that someone else who's dealing with it right now get through it? You just work through it. You just work through it? You just keep going? You just keep shooting. It's just kind of a power through it type thing. Yeah. Uh, Because curse never ends. Yeah. Really, really, it never ends. So encouraging. (laughs) Well, like, like I said, you can be happy with your work, but you can't be too happy with your work because otherwise then you're not you're not growing yeah uh you always got to be looking for to fix imperfections and if there's no imperfections then you're not growing uh but yeah it's basically just work through it try new things uh pre- pretty basic i would say uh i guess yeah just try and shoot new things too um, yeah if you're a landscape person and you're having trouble with landscape try portraits try cityscape try astrophotography just put you know put different elements in there maybe that inspires you in ways that you can use for landscape or vice versa if you're a portrait photographer try landscape Mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah um that's about that's that's about it that's about it yeah (laughs) um what's the um and maybe you have mentioned this or maybe it's something else but what's the hardest part about trying to find a Find ground in, like, a field like photography or even, like, Instagram on social media or what's what do you think is the hardest part? And then if you think of it first, what's what's the best part about it? Uh, I guess the big part is just getting people to, like, believe in you. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of my friends, there's there's a lot that are like, oh, my God, you're doing so good. And there's other like, what are you doing? Like, you're, yeah. you want to live out of your truck and travel? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of, like, just trying to get people to understand you, I think, is a big one. Uh, another one, like, people trying to, like, getting, and then I guess this ties into it, getting uh, people to take you seriously, like companies. Yes. That's the big thing, because a lot of people are like, oh, this is just some kid who picked up a camera. Because mm-hmm. uh, I know there's a lot of times where I get people that email me or, or DM me on Instagram, and they're like, oh, my God, I... I love your uh, I love your work so much. We should work together. And I'm like, all right, awesome. Uh, these are my prices, uh, and I'll have your work done. And you know, two weeks after we get a contract signed and whatnot, they're like, oh yeah, we don't want to pay you. It means that they're not taking you seriously. Yeah, that's that's the big one. It's just getting people to take you seriously. Like, you can commit to the photographer thing all you want. Tell people you're a photographer. You have the website, everything. 
but they have to decide for themselves if they want to believe in you. Yeah. Do you That's do you find that like do you have trouble like taking yourself seriously, or do you do you typically? I did at first. I take myself really seriously now. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have to commit to it. I mean, you, yeah. you want to be a photographer, you have to tell yourself you're a photographer. Yes. That's yeah. a good thing. Uh, but yeah, it's. Mm. I mean, it's a serious thing to me. I mean, I want it to be my career, so. Yeah. How could I not be serious about it? Yeah. No, I like that. I like that attitude. Like that's. A, I think. Yeah. At least for me, like I. I struggle with that a lot. Is like taking myself seriously, much as like having other people take me seriously. Um, but yeah, no, that would that I definitely feel you with that being a hard, hard part about it. Um, is there what's the best part about about photography and being like creative and sharing it on social media? Uh, just getting shared. Just yeah. Getting to meet all the people who are like, oh my god, you inspire me. Like, uh, you're traveling, all that. And I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just. I'm just living under my truck on the North Shore of Minnesota for a couple of days. Like, how is that inspiring? I'm just camping. <laughs> but uh, that's that's a big thing, like, having just people just reach out. And, you're like, that kind of makes it worth it because then you're like, these people do take you seriously. Like, yes. what you're doing. Um, yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Part. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm sure people who, like, look at your stuff or see, like, what you're doing, like, are in jobs that they, they don't love. You know what I mean, too. So it's like I I don't know. It it is inspiring. Like for for to to any any time you see someone doing what they they love, it's just like inspiring. And then yeah. to see them go at it as a hundred percent as you do is like yeah, super super cool. Um, okay, so what are um, some tips that you have for people who are listening to this and maybe want to get started in photography, want to get started in like a creative field of something they love? What are some tips that you have? I'm really sorry with all the simple answers. It's okay. <laughs> if you want to get into photography, pick up a camera and shoot and just see what you can create, see what you like to do, and then just push it from there. I mean, that's what I did. I mean, I started, like I said, I started, <laughs> I shot in my backyard, then I went and I walked across the street to one of my lakes that's across my parents' house, shot around there, and then I did a trip over to Interstate, shot there, and like, I slowly started branching out until finally I was like... Taking, I did a 2,000 mile road trip to the West Coast with SC Sixworth. So, uh, and then from there, it's just been, you know, it kind of spirals. Yeah. I, you know, you start out small and it gets bigger. So, yeah. Would you say like meeting people, like I say, or p- other people in your field has like helped you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely learning how to grow from other people. You I mean, you learn uh, plenty of stuff from people like I never knew the shortcuts on the keyboard until. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot who it was I met. I think it was uh, my buddy in Seattle, Jake Guzman. He told me uh, all the shortcuts you can do on your laptop for for editing and whatnot. And that might be a small thing, but then there's also like the larger things like life hacks and stuff that you can use for traveling. And So yeah, I mean, meeting other people and, and then obviously just meeting other people and seeing their work and being inspired from them you know, taking them seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, I mean, that definitely helps a lot. Yeah. Um, let's see. What is, well, hmm. Yeah, we'll go to this. What is your next goal or dream in your, like, <sighs> as big as you want or is, like, next, like, tomorrow I, my goal is to do this or if it's, like, in the future, like, if my dream job would be this, I either one. An, I want to be an astronaut at Rockstar. <laughs> okay. Wow, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> actually, astronaut would be a bad one. That'd be cool. Really? Yeah, oh, that'd be terrifying. I'd love to see space. That and take space. pictures of space. Sp- there. Space is so captivating. That's uh, that's one. Like, I'd always want to, like, for Mars. Like, the, you know, if they were looking for people to go to Mars, I think I might, I might go. If they, Seriously? If I, if I was offered really? the chance to go to Mars and shoot photos, oh my god, document the process of the first humans ever reaching Mars. I think I would do you it. You would go. It would be weird. <laughs> you, know, you know, if you're only with, like, maybe, like, three or four other people. Yeah. But, I mean, it's that would be, like, a chance of a lifetime. Like, I would, wow. I would do it. Wow. I, mean, I was not It would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. Like, once you, I mean, yeah. No, well, hopefully, good luck with um, that. That would actually would be super sweet. I guess for stuff that I'm trying to get into, like, cinematography is a big one. Uh, and then... 
writing too. Like yeah. I kind of want to get into like so, like I, I've always considered myself a photographer, but I'm a creative first. So like everything is within the realm for me for creating. So like I've always wanted to do like uh, like write a movie script or something. Oh yeah. Or uh, do like a like just like a simple like YouTube video like cinematography type stuff. Those are you know different ends of the spectrum <laughs> for cinematography, but uh, I'm trying to think what else. I I kind of wanted to get into music maybe. Oh really? And just see what I could make with that, like with a soundboard or something. So I mean, there's plenty. I guess the goals would be try to make a song, try to write a movie, uh, try to make a uh, visually visual aspect video. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nothing too big. Just kind of, yeah. yeah I'm going to write the next Star Wars. Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. No, that's cool. I like to, I, I'm excited to see like where, where you go with that and like broadening like your, you know, because you shot a wedding too, didn't you? Yeah. Did yeah. you, how'd you like that? Was it kind of like oh, it was, stressful or uh, did you it like it? It was stressful. Uh, luckily, I knew the people who were getting married and I actually had uh, two of my best friends were at the wedding. One of them was one of the groomsmen, and the other one was invited to the wedding. Oh, that's nice. So that they were it. there. There. So I was kind of like, I was kind of, you know, I was, I was really out of my element, but at the same time, they were there, so I was kind of, they kind of calmed me down a little bit. Yeah. It didn't help that the groom and the bride were like, oh, just take the photos, it's fine, because like originally our plan was, I was going to shoot their photos for like fifty dollars. Oh, seriously? Yeah, because they were, wow. they didn't have a lot of money, and. Uh, I told them, I was like, yeah, I'll, I can shoot your wedding. I just want to get something into my docket, you know, Yeah. Uh, 50 bucks, like, just so I can make something for the day. And they're like, they're like, yeah, we'll talk about it. And then uh, they, they, they actually ended up paying me a little bit extra. Or whatever. I was going to say. But they were still very lenient about it. They're yeah. Like, they're like, yeah, just, like, just shoot the photos. We don't, you know, we don't care. We, you know, we want artistic, you know, artistic expression in it. So, yeah. Yeah. It was, uh. It was an experience. Yes. I, <laughs> I, by the end of the day, I was, I was like, I was zonked. I was like, oh. I got to go home. Uh, it was pretty funny, though. I was walking out to my car. My phone had died because I had been shooting for 12 hours. It was long. I did. Cr- I know. I did Weddings the photos, is the worst. I did or the best, but worst. I did all of it. I did uh, the photos before, like the portraits. I did the ceremony. I did the reception. Like all the dancing oh. and stuff went on. It was So I was there from like 9 in the morning until probably 11 at night, so. 14 hours. That's, yeah. It was long. Oh, my gosh. I, oh. And uh, I was actually walking out in my car. My phone had died. So I plugged it in, and I had a I had an Instagram message. And I was like, hmm, somebody messaged me or whatever. And they're like, they're like, do you shoot weddings? And I was like, <laughs> I, was like I just got done with one. <laughs> like, literally, I just walked. I just got oh, into my car. It? And they were asking me to shoot another wedding. So I was like, hmm. I didn't end up shooting. Did you do? You're like, never again. I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if are my thing. I like commercial stuff. Yes, yeah. So, you know, where I don't have to, you know, the companies can get pissed, but it's like if I shoot a picture of like a mac and cheese box or something, the mac and cheese box isn't going to be mad. I, I can deal with anger over emails. I don't yes. To, so I don't have to do it in person. It's but. not like a once in a lifetime moment that you'll never get back again. And yeah. So you get to shoot Kim and Reese's wedding. Yes, I do. I do. Are that you know them, right? Because I'm she's... one of the groomsmen. Oh, you are. Okay, okay. <laughs> she had said that like there was some connection. It was a while ago that she messaged me, but she was like, "Wait, I actually uh, recommended you to them." Oh yeah, because they That's... were like, because they were getting married. And I was like, "Oh, you should do have Molly shoot your wedding photos." Because I was I was trying to do it, and they're like, "No, we kind of want you to be at the wedding." And I was like, "Oh, oh okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome." Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, I'm excited. Kim seems super nice. So. Yeah, no, weddings are totally different. It's, yeah. I always feel like I know this sounds bad, but I always feel like I'm getting, like, abused or something because there's always, like, the, the different dynamic of families and, like, no, you should go over here and over there and, like, how about this and, like, how about that? And, like, like it just, like, and then it, it's long hours, too. Yeah. So then you're, like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I can do it anymore. And, like, they, it feels like everyone's expecting so much and you're, like, oh, my gosh. But, yeah, normally, it, at least for me, like, at the end of it, after like a, a day of rest, I'm like, okay, it actually wasn't as bad as I like made it out to be, but I can see why you would never do them again. <laughs> yeah, I would say like the actual shooting was maybe like a six out of ten on the stress scale. The nine out of ten on the stress scale was me editing the photos, oh, going so through many. and just like 
oh, the lighting's bad on this one. Oh, the lighting's bad on this one. Uh, oh, the lighting's bad on all of them. And you like, like don't have time to think about it when you're in the moment. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot. That's the thing too with weddings is it's like you don't have control over the location usually. So yes. You can't. You know, like for me, I was shooting in a, a very dark church with green carpets and like. The florist. One, there was one big skylight with the sun coming straight down through. So it was like very contrasty. Yeah. I did my best to make it look good, but it was like, I was like, oh my God, these are going to be just, oh. these are going to be gnarly. And you're, you're good at like natural light. I mean, you just, you're used, so used to the sun. I mean, you know, yeah. so then that's just like out of your element too, where it's like, oh, yeah. this is not my normal like situation. Yeah. yeah I'm not an artificial lighting guy. No. Sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, okay, I don't even know how we got on that tangent, but I, <laughs> uh, you're talking about going to Mars. <laughs> yeah, goals and inspirations, photography, you doing Reese and Kim's wedding. Yes. It's like, yes. It's like 80 degrees, there's like <laughs> different <laughs> cutoff points in there. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think it is, and like, you, you wouldn't have never known, I mean, obviously, that you didn't prefer weddings if you hadn't done one. You know, yeah. and and so I think that's important too. Is just like you're not gonna like everything you try, and you're not and you're not gonna like. It's I don't know. It's scary, but it's. I th- I think it's yeah important to like, be like gentle with yourself when you're feeling the like creative curse of like you're not gonna be good at everything. Yeah. You know, and like everything you try isn't always gonna be the best, and I don't know. So yeah, definitely be easy on yourself. Boy. Yes. Yeah. Um. Okay, what, okay, so this is kind of, like, this is our last, like, official question, unless I randomly think of, like, okay. something else to ask you if you answer this, or as you answer this, um, but what is something that you've learned about yourself throughout this whole journey from starting at photography to, like, right now? Oof. that's deep. <laughs> it is, okay. a little bit. <laughs> I, oh, I didn't read that one last night. Oh, you did No, I, I, oh, man, I missed that one. Let's see. <laughs> uh, I guess the big thing for me is, uh, up until photography, throughout my whole life, I quit a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like, just different various things. I kind of considered myself a quitter with a lot of things. And when I hit photography, I was like, I'm not quitting this. This is going to this is mm-hmm. gonna stick. I'm going to go through this. You know, this is this is what I was meant to do. And so I, I came to, you know, I was, like, I was like, you can quit a thousand things, but as long as you don't quit that one thing that you really, truly like to do, then that's all that matters, right? Like, yeah. As long as that one thing sticks and that's what makes you happy, then the other thousands of things that you quit to get to that position, you know, it really doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You know, before it did because I hadn't found photography yet, but now that I'm in that, you know, all, this, all, the, all the mistakes I've made in my life, everything that I've, all the decisions I've made, everything that's led up to this point, i realized that have been all good decisions and the mistakes I've learned from. But I'm, you know, I'm where I'm, I'm, I am where I am. Oh, shit. How do you, sorry. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I am where I am at now because of all the decisions I made. That was a tongue yes. twister. There you go. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, how could I be discouraged with the way my life played out with, you know, being happy where I am? Mm-hmm. It's kind of, that, that's kind of the biggest takeaway. Because I was very unhappy with a lot of the stuff that I did in my life up to about two years ago. So. Yeah. But so. now, I'm, now I'm very happy. Yes, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, no, I like that. Um, yeah, I, I was, I don't know. <laughs> um, I was going to say something about it, but um, I think I, I relate to that a lot um, with like feeling like a quitter or like feeling like you don't like finish. Like I, I feel like I start a bunch of things, but then I don't have enough endurance to like follow through with it yeah. and so I really like respect that about you is like that you kept going and and, and like you said about like the creative curse just like keep pushing through yeah, and keep going and um even I remember um I'm just gonna bring this up quick too because I think it, it was so cool how you you went to Seattle for a time right yeah oh uh, I moved out there yeah you yeah, moved yeah. out there Portland yes yep. yes and then and then you just came back yeah and it was like I don't know I just think that's cool that like you 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 go and do things and you just keep going, even though like you move back home, like you still keep going. And even you know what I mean. I don't know. I just I respect you for that, and I think that's. I'm glad you brought that up because that is something that you, 
like in photography have like done really well I feel like yeah I guess Portland falls into that category too I moved to Portland with the idea that I was going to live there long term like longer yeah. than what I did I ended up living there for seven weeks oh was it <laughs> yeah I uh I was I moved there I lived in uh, Vancouver across the river and I worked all the way down in Sandy Oregon which was about a 50 minute drive oh wow one way and uh so I'd have to drive through traffic. I'm not a traffic guy. I, oh. I've lived in Polk County. When you come life. from here? Yeah. <laughs> I, I never. I lived in Rice Lake and I lived in River Falls, so I never really had to deal with too much traffic with the other places I've ever lived in my life. And so, like, when I was living there, I was just constantly stressing. And then I got, oh. I, I had pulled an 8 to 4 shift one morning, or one day, and I had to leave at 7 o'clock in the morning and drive through middle of Portland during that, and I got stuck in traffic for three hours. Three like, hours. Yeah, and, and on top of it, I didn't know anybody there, so like, I was having like super bad panic attacks when I was there. Yeah. And I ended up quitting my job, uh, uh, basically on the spot, and I was I decided I was like, all right, I'm going home. You know, I made that decision to quit, but if I had made that decision to quit, you know, who knows where I would have been? It could be, you know, everything could be different now. I could be not even in photography or whatever. Yeah. It could be. Something different, but I, I quit my job. I drove up to Seattle for a week, did a full loop through like the peninsula, Mount Baker, that whole area up there, and that was worth, you know, quitting everything. You know, if I hadn't made that decision to quit something, I would have never ex- experienced that and known, you know, what Washington was like. Yeah. So, yeah. Huh. Deep stuff. Deep stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of deep stuff, where can everyone find you now? If they want to follow you, follow your journey, uh, see every, your photos. <laughs> everything is uh, pretty streamlined. It's just Kyle J. Engman, um, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, I think YouTube. I don't have anything on YouTube. I don't have any videos or anything. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. I thought about <laughs> vlogging, but I don't know. How I, don't, to, I don't think I have the right personality for it. <laughs> Nuh-uh. You definitely could. You definitely could. <sighs> it'd be so awkward. <laughs> That'd be like the best part, though. That'd be, it'd be like... But no. it'd be like... It's like not a good offer. It's like a cringy offer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you have to try it. <laughs> yeah. So I have Instagram, Tumblr. Those are my main ones. Twitter. It's kind of like all my... That's like my life experiences. Yes. Uh, and then I have my website with all my work and portfolios and stuff. Okay. All, all my business stuff. Yeah. So people want more. Just, yeah. And how do you, I'll probably, I'll put the, I'll put your links and stuff in the description, but how do you spell your last name in case anyone's like wanting to look you up like oh, ASAP? It's uh, E-N-G-M-A-N. Okay. So just Kyle J. Engman. Okay. Pretty awesome. easy. Uh, all you have to do is just m- misspell Kylie Jenner. <laughs> Actually, that's, that was kind of my theory is how I blew up so big was I just figured people were misspelling Kylie Jenner. Oh my god. And they gosh. were going to Kyle J, you know, because it's Kyle J-E-N for the first like. Yeah. So they were just misspelling it, and they were showing up on my page. I'm like, oh, this guy has good photos. Oh just my follow gosh. him. That is too funny. I never thought of that, but I wonder if it's true. <laughs> no, it's though. You definitely, you obviously have great photos. Like, no, but well, maybe. Well, maybe. 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 Yeah. But photos for sure first before Kylie Jenner. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we are going to sign off. Um, Kyle, it really was great talking to you. Um, I'm so glad you were able to do this so fast. I was like, I messaged you, and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, like, what about, like, Monday? I'm like, okay, sure. I'm in that lull. I got nothing going on That's right awesome. <laughs> no, I, I really do appreciate it, and I'm excited to see what you create next. So, yeah, and I hope that um, some of you guys decide to follow along and um, see what he's up to, too, and, and possibly be inspired by him and create your own stuff. So, um, yeah. Please come awkward, or please come Please come comment awkward things on my on my post, please. Yes, do it. Super awkward. <laughs> That's a challenge. So, yeah. Um, At Kylie Jenner for me too. <laughs> um, dang, you made me forget what I was gonna say. I was gonna say something. Um, okay. Well, actually, we'll we'll. Do you have any last words? Any last? Maybe that was your last thing you wanted to say. Mm, last words. Last words, and then we'll oh, sign God. off. These are. This is this is the deepest question yet. I don't know what my last words would be. Hmm. Just silence. I think that would be it. Okay. <laughs> just right. awkward silence. All right. Just read my last words. All right, we'll give it two seconds. Okay. We will see you next. <laughs> we'll see you next week on the Laundry Chat Podcast.
Bye, you guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, Solid. That was pretty good. <laughs> How long was that? I don't know because these are bars and beats, and I don't know. It's it's not actually. <laughs> oh man. <laughs>